I'm in the park down from my childhood home and I'm swinging on the swings. Obviously, I remember me and my dad, cause it's only two. Me and my dad used to swing on these swings and he's like, he's like, I, I go, I do like 360s around the swing all the time. And like genuinely as a kid, I was like, oh, fun fact about Sarnia. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the Imperial oil alarm that goes off every day around noon. Thank you. Thank you, pollution. Oh my God. My asthma is also coming back being here. I can feel it. Anywho. Yeah, my dad used to be like, yeah, I, as a kid, like I did 360s over this and you fucking can't. So I genuinely thought I'm like, this man is doing like fucking things around like the bar. And I, so, but now I know I'm like, you're just, you're just a liar. Also this hill over here. Me and my cousins used to snowboard down it when we were really little, and I remember thinking that hill was so big. It's kind of like when you walk in like your elementary school hallways, and you're like, wait, these hallways are so much smaller, and it's like, no, I was half the size. I learned to ride a bike right here. Like coming this way down the sidewalk. I remember it took me so long to learn how to ride a bike. Like much longer than the other kids. And I felt like such a loser. <sighs> I've always had this yearning not to be in this town. It started with wanting to ride my bike because I want to be able to go somewhere on my own. And this is my childhood home. And yeah, I started right here. I remember like I used to ride it in the backyard right there, which wasn't much of a backyard. It was like a deck. Frank! It's only 9.43 and I'm so tired and I attribute that to my concussion, but it's a very good thing that I'm tired because where's my bonnet? Are you on it? I feel like one of those people that looks for their jewel in their bed, but really I'm looking for my bonnet for my hair. Yeah, it's a good thing I'm tired because I have to be up at 3.30, which is in five and a half hours. Cause I gotta go to Toronto and back. And I'm excited for the adventure. I just, one time I drove tired and I fell asleep at the wheel and I was going like 140. Caffeine, no griddle, caffeine. Mm. Let's see how tomorrow morning goes.
Ah, tá, tá. Uh, I don't even know what to say or update on. Uh, honestly, the only thing that's been on my mind today is how I used to love the window seat in airplanes. I still love it on um, like shorter flights, but anything long, the anxiety of being stuck in the window seat and then the other two people have fallen asleep and you need to piss. I, I would love to know, is that a controversial opinion to like the aisle seat? Does everybody want the window seat? I think this really applies to like people that travel in um, solo because if you're like, obviously if you're traveling with other people, like you can just take up the three seats or the two seats and you don't need to worry about it. So maybe this is like a solo travel type thing. Yeah, cause I'll need to pick my seat soon and I'm like, I would love to look out the window as I'm landing in Athens in the morning, but I don't want to dehydrate myself. That's, that's the thoughts on my mind. Other than that, my time in my hometown has finally, for the love of fucking God, come to a close or coming to a close. I don't know if I'm gonna leave Monday night. Today is currently Thursday. I don't know if I'm gonna leave Monday night or if I'm gonna leave Tuesday night. It's probably gonna be Tuesday. I will definitely come back for Christmas. However, oh, I wanna bring this fucking book with me. I don't think I should stay here, unfortunately. I just, the nicest way I can say that this is my parents are people that just should have never had children and they would have lived a much b better peaceful life. That's actually horribly sad, especially as an only child. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat, I'm not gonna sugarcoat the reality of what this is. Yes, my parents have a beautiful backyard. Yes, it's a beach town. Yes, I have friends here. Uh, but it's hard, especially as someone who's recovering from codependency and you basically it's, it's recovering from the addiction of shrinking yourself and people pleasing, making yourself as malleable as possible to others. Um, when you're recovering from that and then you come back into an environment when that's all they want you to do is like shrink yourself and be malleable to what they need, it's really, really difficult. Just a reminder of anyone kind of, this is not um, a unique story. This is a very, very common, unfortunately very common uh, situation in households. But if you're going through it, just a reminder, actually you're worth taking up space. And the pressure to shrink or change yourself or to meet someone's needs and sacrifice of your own is not a reflection of your lack of self or your lack of worth is a reflection of them. So, yeah. Mm -hmm.